up everyone, welcome to section 6.2. In this section, we're going to learn how to graph exponential functions. And once we get our baseline exponential functions down, we're gonna start transforming them. So we're gonna shift them left, right, up and down, reflect over the x-axis. And, and before we get going on graphing these, I, I do wanna show you your parent function. Just your basic exponential function, base b, power is a variable, or excuse me, the exponent is a variable. So we don't even have the a times b to the x yet. We just have a number in our base and a variable in our exponent. So when you have an exponential function of the form b to the x, where again, b has to be positive and it can't equal one, otherwise there would be no growth or decay. Here are some characteristics, here are some traits. And again, I just wanna reiterate that in Math 31, one of the main goals for this class as a whole is when you get outside of this class, when you move on to calculus, um, we want you to be able to look at the equation of a function and know what its basic graph would look like and some of its traits. So I want for us that, oops, I moved the paper, excuse me. Um, I want for us when we leave this class, we take a look at this, we see a, a function like this, b to the x, and you know, okay, it's exponential growth. It's either gonna be growing or decaying. I just have to look a little bit more closely at the equation. All right, so some of the traits for this function, it is one-to-one, -one, meaning it will have an inverse function. And if you've heard of the term logarithm, we'll, we'll be graphing those next in section 6.4, but we have logarithmic functions are the inverses. I want you to take a look at the end behavior here. It's a combination of an asymptote and an arrow. Now, if you have your basic exponential function, all right, we haven't shifted it up, down, left, right, anything like that. Your basic exponential function has a horizontal asymptote at y equaling zero. And if you remember, y equals zero is the x-axis. So you can see here on the left, I have the horizontal asymptote when I'm looking at exponential growth. And when I'm looking at exponential decay, the horizontal asymptote shows up on the right half of your graph. So this horizontal asymptote, it could either be the left end behavior or the right end behavior. It all depends on whether your base is greater than one or a fraction between zero and one. And the other side, if, let's say if we were looking at exponential growth, the left side here, it has the horizontal asymptote y equals zero, and you can see the right side as an arrow heading up. And on the flip of that, if you have exponential decay, yes, the right side is your horizontal asymptote of y equals zero, and the left side is an arrow pointing up. So when it comes to end behavior for exponential functions, you typically have an asymptote and an arrow. You have a combination of those. Your domain is all real numbers. Again, we've had three domain issues in math fractions, radicals, and logarithms. This is not a fraction, this is not a radical, and it is not a logarithm, so my domain is all real numbers. And for your basic exponential function, because you have that horizontal asymptote at y equaling zero, and then you're either heading up for growth or heading down for decay, your range starts from zero, although we never actually touch zero, that's why it has a parentheses, to infinity. All right, you have no x-intercepts, all right, we have a y-intercept at 0, 1 on both of these. And then we have some important points, at, or an important point after that. If you plug 1 in for x, you're going to get b back out. And again, imagine you were plugging in 1. f of 1 would be b to the 1, and that would just get you b. That's why we have 1b here and 1b here. Now, when b is larger than 1, you're increasing. When b is between 0 and 1, you're decreasing from that y-intercept. All right, and your function in general, you have exponential growth if your base is greater than one, and you have exponential decay if your base is less than one. And it's technically a base between zero and one because we have to have a positive base. So this is exponential growth. And this is exponential decay. And we've talked about that in 6.1, so it's, it's playing itself out again in 6.2, all right? And I have those traits on that giant trait table that we've been progressing through, right? We did polynomials in chapter five. 
We did rational functions in chapter five. We're moving along to exponential functions. And in chapter six, we're going to do exponentials and logarithms. But again, the domain, it's usually all real numbers. The y-intercept is typically zero, one. But once we start transforming things, up, down, left, right, stretching, shrinking, it might change. It's possible not to have a y-intercept if I want to get really intricate and let my function be y equals e to the one over x. You could see if I tried to plug zero in here, because my exponent is a fraction, I do have a domain issue. Your x-intercepts, you'll, you'll like always let y equal zero and solve for x. And typically there aren't zeros because your parent function never zeroes out, the, ones that were, the functions that we're just discussing now. This will change if I start stretching, shifting, shrinking, all of that. So you can see here, I have an exponential function. If you've seen this letter E before, great, we'll talk about it. But you can see I have a shift of negative one. So this will have an x-intercept because I've shifted something. So again, the parent exponential function won't have an x-intercept. But once we start transforming them, it's, it's possible. And it, when it's possible, again, you always find your x-intercepts by letting y equal zero. I mentioned for n behavior, it's usually a combination of arrows and horizontal asymptotes. All right, so there's typically different n behaviors on the left versus on the right. It's very unlikely you'll have a vertical asymptote. If you're thinking, well, when is it likely? Uh, I'll go back to this function. I might have a vertical asymptote here, but that's because I had a fraction in my exponent. So it's only when your functions become more and more intricate that you have to worry about that. It's very unlikely you'll have a hole either, unless I were to give you a function, and I could write it in here. If I gave you something mean like this, if I gave you e to the x plus 2 over x squared minus 4, well, then you would have a hole because this exponent is a rational function, and there's a factor common to the numerator and denominator. And I'm not going to get that intricate, but I, I just want you to hear that it is possible to have holes in vertical asymptotes. And again, your, your typical exponential functions are gonna look like this. We've got growth versus decay. All right, so those are our, our baseline traits for our exponential function. So let's go ahead and start to graph one of these. So I'm gonna scooch this up. All right, let's see if we can get that graph in view. There it is. All right, so with that, I'm gonna just do my, my basic, like, hey, I don't know what this looks like. Let me pick some x values and see what the y values are equal to. So I'm gonna start with my favorite five, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And let's see what we're getting from our y values. All right, so I wanna plug in negative two, so let's try f of negative two. That will be one half to the negative two power. Now I'm gonna do this by hand, but I want you to keep in mind, you could also do this on your calculator. Whenever you see a negative exponent, that means take the reciprocal of this fraction. So the reciprocal of one half is two. Once I take that reciprocal, I lose the negative exponent. Two squared is four, so I have the ordered pair negative two, four. And I'll graph that in a moment. If I do f of negative one, that's negative one half. Oops, not negative one half, excuse me. My base was positive one half. All right, I have one half to the negative one. That's like saying two to the first power, which is two. f of zero would be one half to the zero power. Anything to the zero power is one. All right, if I plug in one here, I know I'm gonna get one half back out. And if I plug in two here, well, one half squared is one fourth. And if you wanna pick another x value, you're more than welcome to. I'm gonna start with these five and see what I can tell. So here we go, I got a 10 and a 10. All right, let's see, we had negative two, four. I had negative one, two, zero, one one, one half, like that. All right, so I actually have a pretty good idea of what this graph looks like. I can tell this is exponential decay because my base is less than one and I can see the decay happening. So as I move left to right, I'll start here. I can see my Y values getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And there is a horizontal asymptote there. All right, there's no way for me to cross the X axis. I'm never gonna have a Y value of zero because even if this number, this exponent gets really, really large, imagine something like f of 10, it's one half to the 10th, 
And I think, if I remember, 2 to the 10th power is 1,024. I think that's correct. Um, but you can see this number, yes, it's small, but it's never going to go to zero, all right? I'm gonna have a really, really large denominator, but it's a positive fraction, so I'm always gonna be slightly above the x-axis. All right, and then on the flip of this, this thing is headed up like that. So let's just pick apart a couple of the, the traits for this graph. I'm gonna scooch this up a bit just so we have some more room. All right, so let's talk about the traits here just so we can pick some apart. The domain. All right, I had a fraction, because I have this fraction of one half, but the denominator is never zero. The denominator is two, so I don't have to worry about it. There's no variable in the denominator. So yeah, I have it a fraction, but it didn't affect my domain. I have no radicals, and I have no logarithms, so my domain is all real numbers. All right, if I look at my graph, I could pick apart my range. You can see I have this bad boy going up forever, right? And I don't go down forever, I get stuck at the x-axis, and keep in mind the x-axis is the equation y is equal to zero. So my range here is from zero to infinity. And let's just pick apart our end behavior once we get there, all right? So our end behavior, right, we've always talked, I'm gonna do it in symbols, as x goes left, and as x goes right, let's see where our y values are going. Well, if I go left, I can see my y values are going all the way up to positive infinity, so that would be left arrow up. If I go right, I can see my y values are getting closer to zero, so that would be a horizontal asymptote of y equaling zero, right? And this would be on the right side. Because I, I mentioned that it's on the right because I only have it on the right. This, this whole x-axis is not the, um, the entire end behavior, right? It's just I want the right side of the line y equaling 0 for my right end behavior. Now keep in mind, you can, if you want, go ahead and graph this. So I could go into my y equals, and then I could type in 1 half raised to the x power. I can go to my table function if I want and I can see all of those y values that I got. Here they are, four, two, one, right? And then we get smaller and smaller and smaller. And you can see as I get larger and larger and larger, my, my y values are getting closer to zero, right? Because this is 4.8 times 10 to the negative seven, so that's point oh 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 four eight. But it's not zero exactly, it's slightly above zero. All right, and if I hit zoom six, we should see a graph that looks pretty much like the function I graphed, and there it is. All right, so with that, that is your basic exponential function. And again, this version was exponential decay. So with that, we're gonna graph an exponential growth equation, and then we're gonna start transforming it. We're gonna shift it up, down, left, right, till we get more and more comfortable with what these graphs look like. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye.